Steve Lees, welcome to HR Studio, mate. Pleasure to have Thank you here. You. Uber fastball, di dictated by Cameron himself yesterday. Welcome. Yep. It was, uh, yeah, the slow move in as he was walking around Tesco's of, of, of oh, I might need you to go over there to, uh, by the time he got home, of, yeah, I've set it all up and uh, if you can go around in the morning. and I didn't um, know him when he was serving, but he strikes me as the kind of person that loves to dick people all the time. I take pleasure in it, especially on a Friday afternoon. Well, well, no, no, it, it, it's um, it, no, no, no that'd, be, <laughs> that'd be fair. I, the thing I'm really surprised about is, 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 um, um, yeah, I think he, you know, he's he doesn't normally turn down the opportunity to get in front of a microphone and get on camera. <laughs> I'm surprised. Whereas I normally hide in the background and um, and I'm pushing people towards the microphone and the camera. Um, yeah, um, yeah, it's uh, it doesn't no normally take too much persuasion to go, um, but I think it's it's logistics very much today as well. And, and he's to be fair, he's been he's been keen. He's pushed a couple of times and said you need to get along and speak to Hugh. Um, and um, and 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 he's sort of he's he's he's, he's nudged me this way a couple of times, and and, I, and I've sort of I I, I, you know, I don't like hearing the sound of my own voice, so I don't often. Uh, do it myself. Uh, I normally find somebody um, who, who, and, and you, you know, there's there's lots of good people that I I want to promote out there. So to push forward and 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 you know let them tell their stories. So uh, do you know, I don't think there are many people who like see, hearing the sound of their own voice. You just get used to it. You just get used. Oh, to there it. are some. Yeah, definitely. I mean, <laughs> you, I think I think anybody who served in the military knows that. You know, there's plenty of people who <laughs> like the sound of their own voice. Um, but um, yeah, no. Uh, but yeah, most people don't. I think the natural, you know, the, you, you naturally you, you, you're kind of uncomfortable. I'm I'm fine talking to a big crowd. Brilliant, you, you know. My my, um, um, my missus often gets um, she's she's sort of quite surprised because she she doesn't like talking uh, and and presenting, and and I, I you know I'll give presentations and won't bat an eyelid about it, and you know. And 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 she'll she'll be quite surprised at sort of the size of the audience that I'm giving a presentation to, and it doesn't bother me at all. I think it's when anything's recorded, when anything's on. It's almost like there's that permanent record. You know, if you make a mistake, you know, people aren't going to forget and move on. You've got that permanent record of of, of your voice, of your of, of, of your face on camera. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, maybe it's. I mean, when, in those instances where you're delivering a talk, you're also you're providing value there. Like I'm not saying you're not providing value now, but you're providing value. You're teaching, or educating. Whereas with things like this, because uh, for myself when I've done interviews, it always seems like a, like a this very vain in some way, shape, or form. Whether yeah. I've asked to do it or I've been asked to do it, it's like an element of vanity there, which, contrary to what my girlfriend would say, <laughs> I am not a vain person much. Much, but yeah, I think that's part. That's part of it. And that's you can read your audience in a presentation as well. You can't read your audience. Um, good point. That's a good point. Yeah, good point. Right. Cool. Let's get into it. Um, lots of drama going on in the last couple of years, but people's livelihoods for various reasons. Not various reasons. For one reason, pandemic, economy, jobs, all sorts of stuff. Health, all sorts of stuff. And there's a big hit coming up for the military in terms of uh, whether people are going to be still employed at, or not at some point in the near future. You got made redundant in 2013, unexpectedly, completely swept the, the, the carpet from under your feet, so to speak, in a, in a career that you would say you were completely intent on completing, going the whole nine yeah, yards. Yeah, absolutely. What was that like? Um, uh, it, I mean, it was, um, it, it, it was completely out of the blue for a start. Um, nobody expected it. You know, commanding officer didn't expect it. Um, brigade commander didn't expect it. Um, uh, and I think um, at the time I was second in command of um, of, of two lanks, and um, uh, we lost um, the two IC and three OCs in one round of redundancy. Um, Jesus. Yeah, it was that. Um, it, it was it was that second year. Of, of of the rounds of redundancies where they'd grouped two years together and I think uh, statistically it was something like a one in four chance if you were an infantry major of being made redundant and of course because there was the criteria of, of grounds in which you couldn't be made redundant so those people who thought I'm possibly up for the chop here but I don't want to be had made sure they were on operational tours 
and of course you could volunteer for a tour at that time and you know you wouldn't struggle being able to find one and then you couldn't be made redundant um and you couldn't the, be you couldn't okay. if you were if you were on an operational tour if you were during pre-deployment training and if you or if you were on post-operational tour leave you couldn't be made redundant you were ineligible to be made redundant because you know that would have been you know it would be a pr disaster um and and i think that's why they sort of introduced that um th th those rules although some people who were on operational tours were quite keen and hoping they'd got redundancy um and i think we're um we're, we're you know the complete opposite disappointed as a result but i mean for me you know i'd wanted to join the army since i was five years old um it's all i can ever remember wanting to do um i i'd, I'd worked very hard um i i struggled to a degree going through Sandhurst um so it, 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 you know it, it took a lot of effort to um um to 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 get to where I wanted to be um I then was on a short service commission um and fought very hard to um because you know I'd I'd been commissioned at a time when it was options for change and there was redundancies so there was no regular commissions um which meant you could serve until you were 55 and um and so um I, I you know i had to work hard to get into that bracket to get a an intermediate regular commission which took me to my 16 year point and then from there to get a regular commission which took me to my 55. so i'd worked so hard to get to that point to then be made redundant and and you know yes i had plenty of time on my side because you know you got over a year's notice um, that you've been made redundant, so you have plenty of time to do you know much longer resettlement time um, than, um, than 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 people often get. Um, but um, even even with that year, and even for a year beyond being you know leaving the army, um, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, and I remember going to uh, the uh, CTP employer em employee consultant. At the um, at the regional headquarters in Preston, and and he just sort of looked and went, yeah, you know, go and be a project manager. And I said, I don't want to be a project <laughs> manager. And he went, right, okay, we'll go and be an events manager because you'd probably run events as an officer. And I was like, I don't want to be an events manager either. I want to be a, I want to be an army officer. Um, and 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 then you know his other suggestion was, well, you can have my job because I'm only here for another week. Um, and. You know that that was the level of, of of advice I got at that time, and what was really frustrating is the battalion was just going into pre-deployment training, so we were literally, you know, we were a couple of months away from that, you know, that embargo on, and he was being made redundant. Um, so um, you know, and I, I'd been very much working with the battalion, preparing for um, uh, uh, you know starting those preparatory training. Um, getting people the right qualifications, driving qualifications, etc., for um, for a forthcoming Afghan tour, um, and that you know that that was my mindset. That's what I was focused on. So um, it, it it really did um, it, it really did hit me hard, and and consequently, what I didn't do is I, I shut myself off from the military community, um, from the armed forces community when I left because I was ashamed. Um, I thought there was something wrong with me. I was I was embarrassed about the fact that I'd been made redundant, um, and, um, and 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 there was an element of feeling like you know, you know that was a, a, a statement about about me and because of so you felt like you'd been selected based on like a scale yeah, or I'd, quality. Level. I'd been selected out um, from from the organisation that had been my family that had been the one organization I wanted to be a part of. It was my whole identity. Um, uh, uh, and, and, you know, had been for over 20 years. And so I completely cut myself out, you know, and I avoided all those types of jobs that I could have, I could have maybe naturally fallen into. And I would have been able to network with people who already, who I knew who already worked in those types of jobs. I didn't do any networking. Um, I didn't, um, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't really reach out to, um, any 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 of my former army colleagues um, uh, to, to to get support. I wanted to shut myself away as far away from the armed forces community as I could do. And and, and so for you, you know three or four years after leaving um, after leaving the army, um, I, I, I and 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 consequently, I found it very very hard uh, to find work. And and what I found was you know. Y y y the, the, the hit that I took 
on my self-esteem um and 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 you know it's quite it was quite significant you know on one day i'm a battalion second in command um supporting a battalion that is you know deploying you know over 150 vehicles over 500 people out to um uh, out to another continent uh to go on a three month exercise absolutely smashing the three month exercise and doing a brilliant job um all those things together at the same time i'm also working on um supporting uh training for preparing for an afghan tour i'm working on um providing uh troops to support the security to the olympics i'm working on providing uh individuals who are suitably qualified to support the um uh, the fuel driver strike uh, all these things that I'm doing and all these all these balls that I'm I'm supporting as a battalion second in command to you know roll forward 12 months and you know I I, I I was applying for job after job and getting knocked back after knocked back after knocked back and I I understand doing what I do now why um, and you know I, I you know I got to the stage where you know I was applying for casual work because I just needed a job um, the money had run out and and um and I, and I needed work i needed to pay bills um and, um and and you become more ashamed of yourself you become more of that you know that sense every knockback you get or every uh, you know every cv you've sent out into the void that where you don't get those replies and you try and chase up and nobody responds to you um it it it, it, it it's another dent in the confidence and, and, and you know, it, it becomes that downward spiral. Yeah, if you don't understand it, yeah. I, I'm the same. I, I think I must have applied for... Well, I, I went out and worked in the circuit when I left. I went straight out the circuit for four years out there. But then when I decided I was going to come back and work in the UK, I reckon I must have sent out 150, 200 applications, easy, in various shit, in various forms, oh, yeah. on the online platform, CV going out. And out of all of those, I got two, two interviews. Out of yeah. all of them. And that, so that's hundred and, well, let's say it's 200, 198 rejections. Even by not replying, it's a rejection. And unless you understand it, man, it breaks you. It, it breaks you. It, and it, breaks it's you. Ev everything around as well, you know, your personal relationships and how it affects that. And, and you know, you feeling that, you know, your, you, you know, your partner who got together with you when you were, you know, this, this smart army officer in uniform, um, you know, with this with this position of responsibility, achieving all these great things, and all of a sudden, you know, you, you know, roll forward 12, 20 months, whatever it is, and and you stood outside cash converters with the TV, so you can get enough money to pay the rent. Um, is that the situation you? Oh were yeah, in? yeah, Jeez. yeah. No, I I, I I went right the way down that hole, um, <laughs> and I went further still. You know, I mean, I I did a um, I did a couple of. Um, management roles. I landed a couple of management roles. Um, sort of, uh, the 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 first job I did was with a uh, an outdoor education centre as a general manager, um, and I hadn't gone through the transition. I went in. I, you know, I tackled that job and behaved in exactly the same way I did as a um, as a British Army major. And I spoke to my CEO and my area director in exactly the same way I would have spoken to a general and a and a, and a, and a colonel, and. That is not how you speak to your civilian employees, <laughs> um, as I found out very, very quickly. So I, I, I talked myself out of my first job um, and found myself being made redundant and, you know, the structure changing whereby my position was made redundant um, just before the end of my, um, uh, my probation period with that role. Um, and I, I, th I then um, very foolishly went into um, uh, pub management Ooh. and um, that nearly killed me. And and that's where that took me down my lowest point, and you know I lost. I was working hundred plus hour weeks. Um, I was on most days averaging about two hours sleep a night. I lost three and a half stone in three months, um, uh, and it was because I, I went in there with that military mentality of I will make it work. And the fact of the matter is, it was never going to work. Um, because that is just the nature of that trade. It's, it's, and I really do feel for people in the, in the, um, in, in across the whole retail industry, but in particular hospitality retail, it's one of the toughest gigs out there. I was talking to him um, yesterday about this. So yeah. all, all, my my ex-wife and all her family, they're all publicans. 
yeah. or, they, or they have been at some stage in their life and her parents are, are publicans and have been for decades and they got a, they got a place and we were just, Kate and I were just chatting about it yesterday. It's like, um, you know, the, the thought of basically we'd never do it, like take on a pub and people don't realise it, it's so hard. It's so hard is what two, and, and if you're not disciplined with your own drinking, which most publicans are, like, that's an additional sort of pressure, but in, in itself, it's so hard. And all you have to do, the indicator of how difficult it is, all you have to do is look at this, look in whatever your local town, ability, or your local town is, and think how many of those pubs in that town have had the same publicans, the same tenancy for the entire time. There are needles in a haystack. There, there, there's maybe one or two in the whole town. All the rest change hands as fast as small shops on the on the high street change hands because it's so fucking difficult. And people go in there not understanding or thinking they can make it work, and it's nigh on impossible, nigh on impossible. Constantly changing hands. No high pressure. Don't do it, kids. <laughs> no, I mean it's it, it's um uh, and seeing how uh, uh, you know I worked for a large pub co, um and and went through their management scheme. And, um, and and unfortunately at the time, because it, you know there was that redundancy um, period, and there was a lot of people leaving the armed forces with money in their back pockets. Um, a lot, a couple of the pub codes were encouraging people, saying, "Oh, spend your um, spend your, your your redundancy money on buying into a tenancy." I'm so glad I didn't go down that road, um, and I just went into the management road. But I mean, it it, it got to the point where, um, uh, and it was Christmas, two thousand and. Uh, uh, Christmas 2015, and um, uh, you know when when I was just I, I I couldn't think straight, and this is a very important lesson of um, of of how physical exercise, of sleep, of food affects your judgment and your um, and your mental health. You know, you know one of the you know one of the really important things to address. You know, supporting your mental health is making sure you're eating properly and making sure you're exercising and making sure you're getting enough sleep. Um, and 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 it was a it was a start lesson for me and a, a lesson I should have known anyway from over twenty years service in the army. Um, but it was a, a you know it was a lesson for me. I was I just I, I I didn't know what to do and to the point of and and, and you know and I know people say it but. <clears throat> You're working out the exact method and the way you're going to end it, and and you're thinking, well, if I do that, then you know they won't find me and it won't upset them, and you know, and and and, and you know, eventually, um, I was really fortunate. You know, my partner stood by me and was supportive, and and she turned around and said, I don't care what you say, and she dragged me kicking and screaming along to A and E, and I was signed off. And um, first time, I'd, I, I, prior to that, I'd taken two days sick in over 25 years. Um, and, um, and the doctor just immediately, you know, said, this is burnout and sign me off for three months, which, of course, I ignored. And, you know, <laughs> a month later, and I shut myself away and I was, you know, embarrassed and I was ashamed and, you know, and that sort of further added to it. And I sort of shut myself away um, uh to, to you know where we because the other thing about the pub trade as well is you're kind of tied in because you live above the pub yeah. so it's your accommodation so you, you're tied you're thinking where we're going to live um so you know sold the car um to pay a deposit on somewhere to rent away from the pub and um and and but you know a month two months later i mean we had bills to pay so we had you know we had need um but um you know i was like i'm fixed now i'm fine i feel much better i'm great and uh, back at work and, and off doing something else and, and down the next line. So I did a couple of sort of management jobs. And then um, and then fortunately, um, July 2018, um, uh, saw the role that I'm, I'm doing now advertised on, um, um, on LinkedIn. Knew one of the guys. So I know Adam uh, March and Wincott from when we worked together at ARC and when we worked together at, uh, at Wandiv. Um, so I dropped Adam a message and said, um, um, what are you looking for? And, uh, and he dropped me a message back and said, can you come and speak to Jim on Friday? And that was it. Never looked back. Um, and been doing that ever since. Uh, and, and doing what I do now, I'm working alongside the charity, working, you know, with, with, with within, um, Jaguar Land Rover, uh, uh, um, running their armed forces engagement. Um, it, I understand so many of the mistakes I made over that five years 
and how easy it would have been not to have to make those. And, and one of the goals I set myself in this role is if I can stop somebody making the same mistakes I made, if I can provide that level of support, if I can you know, empathize with them and turn around and say, look, I know what you're thinking right now. I know you, how you're feeling right now. But trust me, this is the path um, you need to look at. This is, this, is, this is the way forward. What was the biggest mistake? Uh, biggest mistake was, um, was cutting myself off from that community, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, not networking and just shutting myself away. Being, and it goes back to what I was saying before about you know, uh, uh, um, being hard on yourself. And, and um, uh, you know, sometimes it's the worst thing you can do um, is, is, is beat yourself up over something and, and punish yourself over, um, o- 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 over something. So, you know, being able to pick myself up and move on and, 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 and you know, have, have, you know, have that degree of confidence in myself and, and understand that, the, you know, all those empty email addresses that you're dropping CVs into and applications into and everything else, that happens to everybody. And that's just the approach. It's the direction I was going in, um, as opposed to any personal indictment as to my ability and, and, and you know, my worth. That's the thing, isn't it? It's the biggest, uh, it's the, well, you, you, say it, you say it now, it almost sounds like a cliche when you say it, but it's not, it's the network you've got which provides the opportunities, your best opportunities for whatever it is, employment, assistance, fucking whatever it is. And the, the best network we have, the best network you have is the one that you're most familiar with or which you've been spent most time in. And for ex-military, is funny enough, it's the military network, you know. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I mean, if you think about it as well, you know, we were brilliant during our army careers and you know, our military careers. We were brilliant at listening to the lessons that other people had learned, of looking up to people who'd had that experience and, and listening to w- what they were telling you about the experience. Um, why don't you do that when you come out? You know, why, why, why do all of a sudden we shut ourselves away from that and not listen to veterans who've gone through that, um, that process of finding the right employment, of listening to their experiences, of listening to, um, you, 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 you know, their understanding of a workplace, of, of, of what they're looking for, of how to go about getting yourself, you know, getting your foot in the door and selling yourself in the right way um, for that workplace. And, and, you know, I see time and time again people making the same common mistakes um, when 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 they're coming out um, from the armed forces and 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 looking for employment. Uh, and 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 there's some brilliant networks out there. There's some brilliant organisations out there. There's some great companies that are supportive employers um, that will um, that 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 will you know that they can offer that advice. They can point you in the right direction. The, the problem I had back in 2014 is I'd shut myself away from that. Yeah. Why, why do you think, why do you think we, we're not open to doing that when we leave? I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, some people are, a lot of people are. Um, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm often quite surprised as to how forward thinking some people are about planning their exit and what they want to do beyond service. Um, but then, you know, for every person you get who turns around and goes, well, at some stage in the next 12 months, I think I'm going to click the seven clicks to freedom and, and choose to leave. You're also getting that individual who's, you know, saying to you, oh, have you got any jobs? Um, and you'll say, you know, when are you available? And they'll go, mm, Monday. And they haven't done anything. Um, they haven't put any thought into it um, whatsoever up until that point. And they've just thought... They've either buried the head in the sand over it, or they've they've thought, well, something will come up. Um, but um, yeah, it's it's uh, for, for for a lot of people. I, I think I think realizing that that you know that is the network you need to tap into as well is important. Um, and um, and realizing that you know you can talk to a veteran, or you you, you know you can talk to somebody who's. Who, who who's employed with an organization you might not necessarily want to work for but listening to their experiences there are common experiences which which are, 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 are really useful to understand through that transition and also understanding as well that transition doesn't stop the day you start your civilian employment transition goes on much longer beyond that and that's one of the things we've done with you know providing our support to employers is turning around and saying um 
you know, th- th- these individuals are good, but the support that, um, you know, many veterans need in employment doesn't stop the minute you employ them. Um, there, there will still be, you know, there'll be a gradual process of transition. Um, and, um, and, and, you know, that individual is going to be all enthusiastic about going into that role. But when they realize the realities of some of the other things, not just the realities of the difference in the, in the workplace environment, but the realities in the difference of, of, you know, their whole living situation, um, the community they're living amongst where all of a sudden, you know, you, you don't have that same relationship with the neighbor next door because they don't do the same job as you they don't work in the same building they don't you know they don't wear the same uniform um and um and 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 you know one of the things i sometimes you know sort of draw as an example is 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 when you have you know relationship troubles in the armed forces and as you know you, you know when you have relationship troubles in the armed forces something happens and 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 you know we we understand the importance of supporting that serving person uh, and their families. So, you know, the unit welfare officer or the families officer will will pop round and, and either help sort the situation out and, and smooth the situation over and provide that guidance and support or make the process of separation as painless as possible in supporting you through that process. When you come out of the armed forces, that community isn't there in the same way. That You can't turn around to the person at work and say, well, you know, I'm having trouble with this and I need support with this in the same way that you can within the armed forces. And all of a sudden what you find is you find, you know, those 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 veterans who, you know, they're, they're sat in their car in a car park in Aldi with a bottle of vodka, you know, wondering how they're going to get through that. And they don't, you know, often in those situations, because they've left, they don't reach out to the former friends that they would have fallen back on and say, I'm having these problems, you know, I'm struggling. Um and 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 reach out for that support in the same way um so yeah particularly if they've not left by choice because they've still got that hang up about the fact of you, you, you know why did I leave why was i rejected from the family that i wanted to be a part of mm. yeah i think one of the main reasons we're not great at getting out and doing that networking piece and and transitioning perhaps as fast or as efficiently as we could is because you don't you don't understand where you want to be you don't understand what you want to do understand what the opportunities are and plus i think quite often we're looking for in the same way as we stepped into the military and that was that was the thing i'm here i know what i want to do now we step out looking for our next career immediately expecting that to be the first job you walk into which isn't necessarily the case i mean if you you know talking about the length of transition you could argue that my transition taken best part of eight years. If you define it by, oh, I'm happy where I am, I understand my place in the world, I'm in a job that I enjoy with a company I want to be part of. Well, eight years. I'm talking eight years, and it was you know eight rocky years. Um, but I'm sort of ah oh, okay. I know where I am now. I, I feel as content now as I did when I was serving. You know, that content you yeah, you're in, no, you know, you, you're in a job that's full of job security. You haven't got to worry about getting sacked <laughs> unless you're going to go and snort cocaine or fill someone in, in front of the CO. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? It literally takes a lot to be binned from, from the military, doesn't it? As in uh, dishonorably discharged, we say. And any other, you get the other examples like redundancy. But yeah, I think we don't understand what the opportunities are. And you, you're not going to know. You don't know what the opportunities are are available to you until you start talking to people like you're saying yeah, as absolutely. early as possible and, and, and it's it's certain mindsets that you come out with as well that can um that that, that you know that can you know and i i said about that transition piece you know when i came out and and, and um and the first role i did beyond uh, beyond the army um you know approaching it in completely the wrong um the wrong way and i've seen that before and i've counseled people on that before you, you, you know saying yeah you kind of can't speak to people in the same way it's a different approach and it's you you, you you've, you've got to understand that and explaining as well you know because because um the, the, there's a degree of humility that's required and and you know you you'll get people who come out and they go into this workplace and they and they'll look around and because people don't 
work in the same way that they worked within the armed forces. They think um, they think you know they're crap. You know why aren't they doing this? Why what you know why why are they packing up their desk and leaving at bang on um, five o'clock when there is still work to do? And having to explain to people, you know, and and, and, and you know, I said exactly the same to to people in my in my role within. Um, uh, within Jaguar and Land Rover. So supporting um, veteran employees when they come in and, and, and providing that advice. You know, explaining, you know, they're actually good at what they do. Um, and they're, re- you, you, you know, that isn't necessarily a reflection of how good they are at what they do. They just do things differently. It's a different way of working. And understanding that you can work alongside those those individuals who work in a different way. And you can offer... Um, you, you know, you can you, you can offer all those good veteran transferable skills and experience, which might help complement that team. But don't expect the team to immediately adopt everything, you know, in 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 the way that you've done things within the armed forces, because you think that's a better way of working. Um, you know, I mean, Jaguar and Andrew have been pretty good at building cars um, for, um, for 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 decades. Um, you know. Explaining to people that you know they, the people around you just work differently. They're different. You know they they and 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 you can learn as much from them as they can learn from you, is really important. Having that open mindset, having that open mind, um, is really important if you want to succeed. And it's why many of us come, you know, come out to the armed forces, and 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 bounce between a few jobs in our first couple of years as we as as uh, after we left, um, and and. Um, yeah, because and 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 this is you know one of the things we've tried to do with um, when 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 we're looking at um, support to employers, um, both through you know the stuff I do with advocacy for Jaguar Land Rover, uh, with armed forces engagement, um, and the stuff we do within Mission Automotive <coughs> Initiative, supporting um, employers in the automotive industry, uh, helping them with armed forces engagement, um, you, you, you know. Helping people get the right job the first time is, is 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 a goal. You know, it's something we want to do. But also recognizing when it might not be the right job, and being able to provide that continual support of saying, okay, well that's not right. Let's look at where else you might be better employed. What other sort of role um, you might be better suited to um, is 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 really important because it doesn't always work first job. You know, and and. It's, it's it's why work work experience placements work really really well because you get that try before you buy, you get that light bulb moment where you look around and go ah actually that's not too dissimilar to what I've done in the armed forces doing this, or yeah actually I can understand how what I've done could work in that particular part of the workplace, and the employer gets that light bulb moment as well because you know not every employer is. Um, you, you know, has that, um, and not every line manager has that awareness as to how your transferable skills might be applicable to their um, to their workplace. Um, but all of a sudden, they see you and they think, you know, this is brilliant. You know, this individual can do this, this, and this. And I never would have picked that up from that individual CV. Mm. Um, and it's things we can't articulate often on our CV as well. That are the really important things. Um, that the re- you know the, the, those extra pieces that add value to the a so- workplace. Soft skills. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and and not 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 just the soft skills. You know, the experiences of um, so like, um, uh, 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 you know, I think I mentioned yesterday. You know, one of the things I've been doing within Jaguar Land Rover is is championing um, uh, veterans, veteran employees as mental health champions. You know, because we, we we're a company that is, you know, realizes the importance of uh, of of of. You know, positive well-being and mental health um, amongst um, amongst the workforce, um, and 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 how important that is. Um, and so, y- y- you know, one of the things I was doing over the course of last year, and it kind of came about by accident, was um, was giving a um, a presentation on um, on well-being out of lockdown and considerations, and actually taking that. You know, that that so, you know, if we think back to I think it, it was, you know, during the second big lockdown of 2020, um, we had a lot of 
um, veterans amongst, you know, the noisy veterans amongst the um, social media community, um, Twitter them and, and, and all that, you know, and, and lots of Facebook posts and Twitter's, uh, Twitter posts of, of people saying, oh, if you think lockdown's bad, think what it's like for people on operational tours. And I, I kind of, there's a degree of, you know, yeah, you, you, you know, there's, you know, there's, there's deprivations during operational tours, but um, uh, I didn't subscribe to it in the same way. You know, you know, we 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 volunteered for that. You know, we wanted to go on operational tour of serving people. Often, most of us, um, and um, and we were mentally prepared for it. Whenever we went on an operational tour, even the short notice ones, there was a degree of mental preparedness for for going on those tours. Um, when Everybody went into lockdown. Nobody was prepared for that. You know, it came completely out of the blue. And so we were talking about this. And there, there, But there are some commonalities between, um, you know, being on operations and, and, you know, how people were experiencing life um, during lockdown. And so, you know, my line manager at Jaguar Land Rover, where I sit within Jaguar Land Rover, is I sit within uh, engagement and well-being, a performance engagement well-being team within HR. And so the head of engagement, you know, sort of, I always I have regular one to ones with him, and we were talking about this, and I was saying, um, and I was saying, you know, and at the time Jaguar Land Rover doing some great things, looking at well being and mental health support to people, you know, working from home and people who are furloughed and 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 during lockdown, and and to those people who are still having to come into work and, <coughs> you know. <coughs> Excuse me. Worried about the um, the 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 you know the effect on you know how much worry with 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 their families etc. And um, and so um, uh, you know I was saying if we if we, if we're concerned if there are these commonalities between what we're experiencing during lockdowns and what we experience during operational tours, then actually where we should be concerned is what happens beyond lockdown. What happens when we come out of lockdowns? And so, you know, he said, well, you know, can you can you do a short talk on that to, you know, the HR team we sit with? And, and, and I did. And it just snowballed from there. And I think I've delivered that presentation now to over a thousand people in Jaguar Land Rover, various different parts of the business. Um, and, and it's amazing how many people that resonates with. Now, part of the purpose of giving that presentation is 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 is, is me turning around and saying, you know, as your armed forces engagement lead. These are the people that work amongst your um, amongst your organisation. These veterans that sit amongst your organisation as employees. These are people that can add a value not only with what they're doing in the in 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 the workplace, but other value as well from their experiences that they've had during their military service. And 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 you know one of the things that, contrary to misconceptions, one of the things that I've always championed um you know within this role um both within jaguar and Rover and other companies that i support um uh, uh, with armed force engagement is one of the advantages of your veteran employees you know when you're focusing on mental health and you're focusing on on, on that well-being a veteran is probably more likely to ask if you're okay not only are they more likely to ask if you're okay they're more likely to ask their you know, they're more likely to ask their managers, their leaders, are they okay? Whereas, you know, in a lot of workplaces, I find, you know, a, a lot of workplaces beyond the armed forces are actually far more hierarchical than than, than the armed forces are. Um, and there's this common misconception that, you know, the armed forces like. I mean, you you know, you know, the the, the, the you know, one of the things I loved about um, serving in the British Army is. As an officer, if I was about to make a mistake, if I was, you know, if I did something that wasn't a good <laughs> idea, I'd have Lance Corporal turned around and went, "That's a shit idea, sir." And 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 I listened and said, "Okay, why is it?" And sometimes it was a shit idea because it involved them doing something. Um, but more often than not, you know, there was a different perspective, there was a different level of experience. They looked at something from from an angle that I hadn't considered. And, you know, there's plenty of occasions where, you know, I'm still around today because I listen to my NCOs. Yeah, what's interesting about that is... You don't get that as much outside of... No, but you also, over my experience, you also don't get that within the commission, non-commission route. So there's no way... I've talked about this recently in the past. There's no way I would turn around to, let's say I was a lance jack. I wouldn't turn around to the platoon sergeant and go, last year. That's a shit idea. <laughs> I'd say it to the platoon commander. I wouldn't say it to the platoon sergeant. And and the reason that that popped in my head recently is because there was a situation where, back when I was serving, 
there was a guy who went off the rails, senior senior NCO, went off the rails, right? Um, unfortunately for him, he's fine now, but went off the rails at the time and Im- impacted his career in a big way. And a few years before, when you look back, you go, that was obvious. We saw that come in two or three years before, maybe longer, four or five years before, could see it come in, telltale signs were there. Whereas now, I think, with the with the uh, with the advocacy for you know mental health awareness and the attitudes changing within in the military, I think if it was the same thing happened now, it would be flagged up in a way. But back then, you wouldn't flag it up and say such and such. I don't even I don't, I don't even want to say the rank, but such and such, um, he needs to be he needs to get help because you could say it to someone else, you know, or you could, or you could if you had a, that relationship with them, you could say it to him. But at the time, we didn't say it. So I think yeah. I don't yeah I don't think you get those challenges within the within the um, commission, non-commission rule. Yeah, 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 certainly. Because the and, thing and, is, and the and fact actually, of the matter is, officers are quite often wrong. And actually... So you need to point it out. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly during map reading. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm surprised I made it here today. Um, the, um, and, and Well, I'm surprised I actually managed to get dressed today without a Sergeant Major to um, tell me what I needed to wear. And, uh, and, and uh, But no, the... the, the um, yeah, and, and but... Doesn't there have to be a degree of that? Doesn't there have to be a degree of that relationship between a lance corporal and the sergeant, whereby the sergeant can turn around and you know, you know be, it, 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 it's that relationship has to be different. Um, well, would you tell us to IC? Would you tell the colonel that it was a shit idea? Oh, no, I yeah, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely, and and this well, is where I go back to what I was originally saying about you know my first job talking myself out of my first job. You can't tell your CEO and your area director that when you come out of the armed forces. In the same way, you probably can, but you you, you know and 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 uh, I remember um, my area director turning around and saying, "Okay, I hear what you're saying about you know we can do this and we can do this better and we can do this better," um, which is you know probably what all she heard from me um uh, but um uh, um she said put it together in a presentation and you know you can present it to the ceo and we'll 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 we'll, we'll go and i spent weeks hours into the night putting together all the statistics putting together this presentation it was spot on staff work you know it was like i would have been quite happy to have presented that to a general and um and i gave this brief and the ceo's comment at the end of it was so basically what you're telling us is we're bad leaders. And I was like, no. And I was really quite affronted that they, that's what they read from it. But actually, when I look back, absolutely. That's absolutely what I was saying. <laughs> and, 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 you know, and, and, and this is an organization. This was an organization that had gone, you know, that had grown and had immense success in a very challenging industry for 10 years. Um, but I'd gone in there, you know, Lee's, Ex battalion second in command. I know how I can run this better and more efficiently because I was with that military mindset of how we can do things and how we operated within the armed forces. So yeah, it, it's understanding and 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 um, and and but understanding you know where the value is you can add and 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 and, and, and uh, you know, going back to my uh, uh, sort of original point on this, you know they. You, you will often find what we're not particularly good at is we're not particularly good at asking ourselves if we're okay, and that's where we sometimes that's where we sometimes struggle and recognizing it ourselves. Or if we do recognize in ourselves we're not okay, of actually suppressing it and and thinking, well, I've got a you know I've, I'm 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 this strong veteran or I'm, you know I'm this strong individual. I, I've I've done all these things and it becomes even harder sometimes because you think. I've done all these things and I've survived all these things mentally that I did within the armed forces. Um, why should this um, be something that, you know, affects my my mental health, my well-being? You know, why should this be the something that I struggle about? I mean, what, what I found really surprising when I came out of the, um, of the army is um, how mentally debilitating it is to worry about what you're going to wear the next day. About what you're going to wear to work, you know, and how, you know, oh, what's everybody else going to be wearing? What? Because you'd spend 20 years being told what to wear, and you're like, oh, what's the right order of dress? You know, what's the right? And and li- little simple things like that that people, you know, frankly don't give a toss about it, it, outside of, you know, who've, who've gone through entire civilian careers. 
um, uh, you know, how little things like that can affect people who've served and, and understanding that a little thing like that. And, you know, when I've talked to line managers um, uh, uh, in, in, you know, in Jaguar Land Rover and in other companies as well, um, where they'll be, ter- they'll be talking about an individual employee and they'll be like, well, you know, he's done all these great things. And yet that is the thing that he's struggling with. And trying to explain why he might be struggling with that particular small thing, that to that line manager is is a non-issue. You know, something that's you know, what what why couldn't he have you know opened the envelope and sorted out that appointment that he was supposed to sort out? And trying to explain to him that actually, you know, somebody would have done that for him if he hadn't. You know, he'd have been he'd have been on part one orders, and and the platoon sergeant would have been there going, make sure you go to that. Um, you go to that appointment and it would have been done for that individual um, and, and explaining why, you know, that sometimes is the struggle. That sometimes those small little bitty things are sometimes the things that individuals struggle with in those early days of transition um, when they leave the armed forces. Yeah, do you know what a weird one is for me that I've, I've struggled to get over and only, only this year or last year, 2021, 2022 now, getting over is... Um, taken it upon myself to book my leave because even leave was booked for you your three weeks off at summer or two weeks off at summer it was was allocated you didn't get to choose when it was christmas was the same you get a week off at easter maybe wouldn't you throughout throughout the year and i for the first two years in this job and currently now didn't take any leave and i get to december and i have 20 odd 20 odd days left to take in december you can only carry so many forward and next into the next into the next uh and the next year, and they end up frankly having to take all the leave and not be able to do it. You know, it's weird, li- weird little things. We're working during leave is something that I find myself very, you know, yeah, yeah, very hard not to do, to stop myself doing mm-hmm. answering emails and 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 you know turning things off. And 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 the other thing is 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 um, um, going home, or you know, now we don't go home. You know, we, a lot of us are working from home, but you know closing the laptop and and sort of putting it away and and actually doing a working day a normal working day and 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 i found you know in 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 a couple of roles i've done i've really struggled with the fact that i've not you know i've not worked an 80 hour week and thrashed myself to death uh to near death and relationship breakdown within the course of every week of work um, because you, you, you know you, you become so accustomed to that, and 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 in 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 the you know in, when you're in the army, it's it, it's it's hot and cold. You have periods of time where it's you know, you know really relaxing and 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 a very nice work life balance, uh, and then you have other periods of time which are incredibly intense. But as we all know, during that last decade that I was serving, certainly those <coughs> periods of intensity were more frequent than the periods of. Of, of you know when it was quieter and when you had that relaxing time and lots of time off and you know short shorter working days and everything um so you you know that started to become the norm whereas before it had been the exception um and that started to become the norm and and so you you, you then you know you you came out of the armed forces at that time thinking well i've not you know i've not worked an 80 hour week i've not thrashed myself half to death i've not I'm not, I'm not adding value. I'm not earning my salary here. I should be, you know, and and you, you, it's very easy to get very hard on yourself and 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 to to overwork yourself. Understanding, you know, that actually it's perfectly normal. Civilians don't work in the same way. Well, some do actually, and 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 you know, you, you see plenty. And I, I think that's another common mistake. Some people come into some roles and think, oh yeah, well, I just want a nice relaxing time where I get to spend lots of time at home and. You know, I'm not thinking about work all the time, and 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 actually, you know, explaining to them what you're doing there is you're jumping into the fire from the frying pan. You know, if you think that role you're looking at there is a quiet role, where you're not going to be getting calls in the middle of the night and emails in the early hours of the morning, um, and you're not going to be, you know, staying late, um, burning the lights, then you know you you, <laughs> you need to. Ha- and again, goes back to what I was saying about work experience. And, and doing work experience placements and actually having a look or talking to somebody who already works in 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 um in in, in that particular role in that um or, or or in you know that type of industry preferably that company um and ha- having that chat 
why are why are JLR pushing hard on the armed forces engagement? What's the value they um, see? <laughs> so Jaguar Land Rover's armed force engagement sort of came about on the back of um, the first Invictus Games. So you know they're committed to supporting the first Invictus Games, and the then CEO um, uh, Ralph Speth uh, and the then uh, um, uh, exec director of HR stood up and said, we want to recruit X amount of veterans um, and find employment for them. You know, it's really important to give these people, you know, second careers beyond um, the armed forces. Um, and, um, and, and and that later then became, you know, the, the you know, it was, a, it was an open target. It was, we want to provide employment for as many veterans as we can. You know, we want to become a forces friendly employer. Um, and that was sort of way back in, in, in 2014. And, and that's how the mission motorsport relationship with Jaguar Land Rover came about as well, because, you know, one of the things that James Cameron then pointed out to them was, was it's all very well and good saying that, but actually your system for recruiting automatically filters out most military applicants. In, in what way was it doing that? Electronic sifting, um, where, you know, specifying certain qualifications that the individual won't have, you know, where, where the individual might not have that certain qualification, um, but they'll have experience that goes way beyond that qualification um, in, 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 in that particular, you know, technical field. So you, you might have a graduate who comes out with that particular degree that's specified on the, on, on the job description. But, you'll, you, you know, you might have a, a, you know, an avionics technician, for example, who's coming out of, the, you know, 10, 15 years, you know, with, with Royal Electrical Engineers, who's got more experience. <coughs> so so uh, as a result of that, one of the things that, um, uh, uh, you know, this sort of said is, you know, and, 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 and James said, you know, I'll prove it. And we put a guy in there called Charlie Catling. Um, who was the first program manager uh, for the armed forces engagement? So initially, it was it was kind of anchored around recruitment, and I see a lot of companies do that. You know, when they start their armed forces engagement, it's anchored about employment. It's anchored around um, recruiting service talent because you have a recruitment need. Um, and 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 so over that period of time. Um, you know, we, we, we had uh, bespoke programs where we looked at, you know, early service leavers and getting those into employment uh, within the industry. We had um, uh, work placements uh, where individuals were coming in and doing work placements. And, and, and of work placements, 80% of those work placements uh, led to employment. Uh, we were also uh, providing longer work placements for those people who were wounded, injured and sick. And, um, you know, we put 40 um, of the 41 over that period of time um, of uh, wounded and sick veterans who went through that process were employed um, and um, most of which were employed within Jaguar Land Rover but those that weren't it was that work experience placement at JLR that had got them the connection got them the stepping stone into the next um, stage of employment and, um, and, and, and so that was very much um, uh, uh, you know, one of the anchors for our, the armed forces engagement that that bridging that gap between, you know, being able to recruit that service talent, um, and and within that the other pieces of support as well. You know, supporting our reservist employees, and and we were one of the first companies to get the uh, gold award on the employee recognition scheme uh, back in uh, two thousand fifteen, uh, revalidated in in twenty twenty. Um, and, um, and, and, and it, it, you know, it kind of grew around that. Um, but when I arrived in 2018, it was almost like, you know, it, it, the, the, the automotive industry was going for a perfect storm at the time with, you know, people not buying diesel cars, all the automotive manufacturers have been, you know, investing all their money and investment into <coughs> building lower emission diesel cars. Um, uh, uh, you know, that, that sort of precipice of do we go down the road of ev you know is 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 is, is you know battery electric vehicles you know is that the way ahead is that the future is that you know the solution is that because there's a lot of money investment required in, in in doing that and so car sales were significantly dropping but the need for investment was rising um and consequently you know you, you know sizes of automotive manufacturers were, were were drawing down at that time so we stopped recruiting and you know we we we, we um 
one of the things I found myself doing when I first arrived at Jaguar Land Rover was actually supporting people in the other direction. So providing that additional resettlement service and reconnecting them with the um, uh, with the armed forces community network of you know where those opportunities lie for for you know what sort of alternative employment you know they could they they, they could find. Um, and, it, and at the time, it would have been all too easy for Jaguar Land Rover to have turned around and gone, well, we're looking at, you know, what ways we can rationalise, where, where we can save money, um, where we can be more efficient. You know, armed forces engagement, we're not recruiting at the moment. Do we need that? And they didn't. And they didn't make that choice. And they recognised, actually, that is still something, you know, we it's important to us. We have a very close relationship with, you know, we've always had this long history, a relationship with the um, uh, with the armed forces. We've made those commitments in signing the armed forces covenant and 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 and, um, and and with the employer recognition scheme awards that have been awarded. And um, and and you know, what else can we do? That if we're not recruiting, what else can we do to support? And of course, there's the continual support to employees that are already within the company. So providing that support to um, veteran employees and members of the armed forces community, because it's not just veterans, it's your reservists, it's your cadet force adult volunteers, it's you know, military military parents and our armed forces community network within you know one of our employee networks within Jaguar Land Rover was actually set up and and and, and is chaired by a military mum you know her her son serves in the uh, Royal Regiment of Fusiliers um and um it's you know bringing together that in, in employee network and providing that level of support it's providing that you know that that connection, that understanding for engagement with defence relationship management, and with uh, you, you know with with, with 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 the parts of the armed forces that companies engage with, uh, be that on you know PR or um, or CSR activity, and and so you know we we continued that investment, we continued that support, and 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 you know having that employee from Mission Motorsport running the armed force engagement program and being the armed forces lead within Jaguar Land Rover, and 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 then we really sort of recognised the utility of that when we went into because um, of course recruitment had stopped, and then just as we start to get to the green shoots, just as we start to get to the good point where. You know, there's job opportunities coming back up in the industry again. We get hit by the number 73 COVID bus and uh, <laughs> driving through the middle of the plan. And, um, and, and you know, we went from 132 jobs on the website to one job overnight in back in 1st of April uh, 2020. And um, I keep wanting to say last year, but of course it's, you know, <laughs> as in time fly, flying. But, you know, so, so um, we, 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 you know, we hit that, that period. All of a sudden, we we started to see other ways that having that, having having kept that investment, having kept that armed force engagement lead within Jaguar Land Rover, what value it could add, you know. And I found myself then um, supporting um, the uh, the you know the local resilience um, forums and 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 the um, and the military uh, uh, structures that were then looking at potential test sites for mobile test teams. So, you know, we, we facilitated, um, we had one of our car parks at one of our sites was available, um, fortunately not had to be used, um, but we had another one of our sites was used for um, for one of the um, one of the military mobile test units coming in. And then we had other, you know, we had other factors as well, uh, other, other things. So, you know, we were mobilizing reservists to support op rescript. And and having and every single one of those because it was outside of the normal process of mobilisation, um, every one of those individuals required individual support and support to the line manager and support to payroll and HR to say this is what's happening, this is the process to be able to liaise with um, to be able to liaise with those reservist units when you know somebody was coming to work going I've been mobilised and find out you know you haven't been mobilised. Um, you've been asked to come in on a on a on a drill night, um, so you can have a briefing as to what you might be doing to support. You know, your unit is quite rightly anticipating what support you might have to provide, or you might you know you might be asked to provide to provide, and is and is and is you know is preparing for that. But you know, being able to unpick all those things and provide that support, having that you know, not only that knowledge, but also the the right connections where I could pick up the phone and go. This individual saying this, you know, is this the case? 
um, or you know, this individual is being told they're mobilised. This individual cannot be mobilised for X reasons, uh, and explaining why, um, and and provide that level of support. And of course, what we've done further from that is the you know that that advocacy that experience we've had with Jaguar Land Rover supporting their armed force engagement that success we've had and an understanding the additional value not just recruiting um, but understanding the additional value that armed force engagement can add you know Mission Motorsport back in March 2019 launched Mission Automotive which is armed force engagement for the automotive industry um, uh, launched at the Royal Hospital Chelsea um, he, he, he partnered with the Royal Foundation and Society of Motor Manufacturers and Traders and um, and supported by the MOD. And it's looking at and it's explaining that it's not just about recruiting. That is a part of it. Um, it is about providing that support beyond employing the individual. It is, it is about being able to tap into the additional transferable skills and experience that veteran employees can provide to your workplace it's about how do you have a forces friendly policy that supports reservists and explaining the impact of because for us having a forces friendly you know gold employer recognition scheme standard policy for reservists which provides 10 days additional paid leave for that reservist so they can go and do annual continuation training a Jaguar Land Rover is less of an effect, you know, because it's a, you know, it's a large organisation that can, you know, absorb that, recognises the benefits of that. If you're an organisation that employs five people and one of your people is a reservist and that person gets mobilised, that's 20% of your workforce. And that's a huge commitment. And one of the things I find when I do the advocacy piece of talking to other organisations, both within the automotive industry and outside of the automotive industry, is um, they'll often look at what we're doing with Jaguar Land Rover and go, we can't do that. You know, we, we, we're not on that same scale. But explaining and, 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 and letting them understand that actually, they, you know, what they're doing, one, you know, is, is significant when we look at the scale of the organisation that is supporting and becoming forces friendly and, and, and supporting the armed forces community. But secondly, also, there are other opportunities where that, that organisation can move far quickly and react to things far more quickly than a large organisation um, like, you know, Jaguar Land Rover or other big companies as well within the UK, that you will see that, you know, when they do something new, when they do something different, there's a process of change it has to go through this you know, various people that have to be involved and 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 consider it understandably so. Um, whereas, you know, if you're an organisation of five people, one person turns around to somebody sat on the other side of the desk and goes, "Can we do this?" and they go, "Yeah, bang," and it's on. Um, it's game on, and they and they're doing it. And we've seen that with some of the um, smaller companies that we engage with uh, in the automotive industry, Mission Automotive, um, have been very very quick to react and be able to provide. Um, levels of support and 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 um, and and you know do some really really great things both to support mission automotive uh, mission motorsport the charity but also support wider armed forces engagement as well so you know we, we we've we've gone from taking that Jaguar Land Rover model of armed forces engagement and we've gone to now we have an armed force engagement program manager at Stellantis um, a guy called Parnegi who actually. He he did his his work placement within Jaguar Land Rover, um, and did two years within Jaguar Land Rover before he moved on, and 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 went on to um, um, to work in Stellantis. Um, and Par's doing some great things with Stellantis. They they you know they're leaning in doing what they can do, and identifying what what you know and and. and you know, we at Jaguar Land Rover are looking at stuff that Stellantis are doing and other companies are doing and going, actually, that's a good idea. Maybe we can do something similar to that. And they're looking at examples that, you know, we've done within JLR and going, well, we'd like to do something like you've done there. There's no monopoly on this. Um, being able to share that best practice, you know, even being able to share the recruitment piece. We're all trying to recruit at the moment and we're all trying to recruit the same people. We're almost at the opposite end of the spectrum as to where we were back in. 2018 when that recruitment freeze came in um whereby everybody's you know which we're, tr we're trying to you know get people uh, and we're going to have to tap into um other areas you know not just people who are already experienced within the automotive industry to be able to source um the people we're looking for um but 
you know, if, if, if I support as the Armed Force Engagement Programme Lead for Jaguar Land Rover, if I support an individual getting a job within Lotus, for example, that's one less person that Lotus has to try and attract from who is currently working at Jaguar Land Rover. Or, or, or one of the potential candidates that we're currently looking at for Jaguar and Android. So, so you, you, you know, there, there is this. Otherwise, it just becomes this giant lumpy mattress where we're all recruiting from the same pool. That pool isn't getting any bigger. It isn't big enough, um, and um, and we're just pushing the problem down, and 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 it's and, it, and it's cropping up elsewhere. So, you know, looking at some of the great things that have been done with some of the mission automotive partners. Um, Stellantis are offering all of the training that they that they deliver at their performance academy in Coventry. They offer that free to uh, to service leavers, veterans, military spouses. Um, so you can you know go online, uh, have a look at the courses that they run. You know some of them are e-learning courses, some of them are, uh, are, are physical attendance courses at the academy. But they're offering those courses. You know that's one of the commitments they've made in providing that. Uh, that 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 training support, uh, along with you, you know several other things as well. And then you've got organize you know you've got companies like Morgan for example. Uh, Morgan have, have done a lot to support um, uh, the 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 charity side of Mission Motorsport, and and of course we had um, uh, wounded and sick beneficiaries of the charity who were you know in the pit crews uh, in the car driving uh, in the um, in, in in the teams for two entries for. Uh, in Morgan race cars on race of remembrance in Anglesey in November. Um, they've been doing other things besides, um, you know, they're, they're working towards, you know, uh, they, they've employed um, three veterans in the last year uh, that have come through, uh, um, supported through um, uh, uh, the mission automotive initiative. And, um, and, you know, they've, they've got aspirations to do far more as well. And in, in, in terms of armed force engagement, and then of course, you know our most recent um, uh, most recent member of the Mission Automotive Initiative is um, is Lotus. Uh, really, you know, real exciting things happening at Lotus, um, and 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 some really ambitious plans uh, going forward uh, over the course of you know the next 12, 24 months, and 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 the future beyond that as well. Um, Lotus have been covenant signatories uh, for some time. Uh, and currently hold silver on the employer recognition scheme, and, and we're looking at you know how can we support them, how can we help them, you know take that next step up towards gold, so that they can provide that advocacy and support. Um, and of course, you're going to see one of one of their um, uh, w w one of the great levels of support they instantly jumped in with 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 which is something Jaguar Land Rover have done in the past. Uh, and one of the examples we gave them, which is um, which is the poppy car, of course. And, and I heard it before I saw it. Yeah, this this, <laughs> this year's poppy car is 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 you know is beautiful uh, Lotus uh, 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 Exige uh, 430 Cup, um, and that was um, that was wrapped by um, the uh, the the livery manager and a team from uh, of beneficiaries from Mission Motorsport. Um, designed, you know, the design was was put together by a team of beneficiaries from Mission Motorsport um, who um, who put the beautiful design of it together. Um, it's not something we, you know, it's something we've done before. We did that with the F-Type SVR uh, back in 2017. That was only ever supposed to be for November 2017. I'm not, you know, sort of insinuating what might happen to the future of the, of the Exige. Um, but, um, you know, that was only ever supposed to be um, um, for November 2017. I drove that car back into Fenend um in uh, november uh 2019 um so that lasted two years uh with that poppy wrap on and the effect what, what was really interesting is wherever you took that car particularly when you took it in the workplace and you took it to you know the sites the effect that it would have on it on people the impact it would have on people in raising awareness about you know it's not just about you know a a sexy sporty expensive toy that makes a lot of noise and drives very fast it's about the 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 impact and and uh, that that has on people um and and certainly amongst the you know the, the working population of, of of jaguar land rover um you know that that was something that resonated uh not just with your armed forces community employees but with all employees, you know, and whenever I used to take it, you know, and I used to take it on a road tour around remembrance of, of you know, for two years around remembrance of the sites, 
um, you know, employees would come along and go, this is, you know, this is absolutely fantastic. This is what we should be doing. You know, this is a, a, a part of the community we should be supporting. It's not just the effect it has on those armed forces community employees. It's it's one of those things that is, you know, it, it, there's a common level of support amongst society, amongst communities. Um, and, and, you know, employers recognise that. Employers see that. Um, helping them engage is is you know that, that, that's one of the, the you know that's one of the key um, uh, you know one of the key goals of the Mission Automotive Initiative. It's being able to you know they want to do the right things. They want to help the armed forces community. They want to help service leavers get into jobs. They want to support their veteran population. They want to be able to tap into those transferable skills. They want to support their reservists. Helping them do that is is and an, an, you know being able to use the examples, being able to use best practice, being able to learn from the mistakes that other organisations have made and, and and not make those same mistakes is um, is 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 you know one of the one of the one of the key objectives of of of, of that initiative, and you know it's it's one of those initiatives one of those you know and, and it's the same for any military charity then you're in that you know sort of bizarre position whereby your ideal world your ideal measure of success is where you don't need to exist anymore i don't think that day will come mm. but um but that's what we work towards we work towards actually you know actually negating our requirement um which you know isn't a great business model i suppose but um but there's a need for it, and and there's always other organisations that we can, you know, that we can support. Excellent, mate. Steve, it's been a pleasure. Is there anything that we've not mentioned that you want to mention? Um, missionmotorsport.com? That's right. Dot right? uh, org. Mission so, Motorsport. So missionmotorsport.org to look at what the charity does. Mission Automotive. Dot org um, uh, to look at what uh, the Mission Automotive Initiative does. Uh, we've got some really exciting stuff coming up in 2022 um, with um, Mission Automotive. One of the key things with is you know if you are a you know if you represent an employer that is interested in how you can engage with the armed forces community. If you're a service leaver or a member of the armed forces community, you know be that a spouse, be that um, you know a c- 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 cadet instructor. A, a reservist or, 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 or a veteran or a service leaver. Um, we're going to have the um, national transition event. So I know you went to the one in 2020, which we had just before um, that first lockdown kicked in uh, back in February uh, 2020. Great event. Great yeah, event. We've, we've, we've got another one, which it promises to be even bigger. 24th? Uh, 24th of yeah. March uh, at Silverstone. And this one promises and, and, and a better time of year to hold it as well. Um, will I'll be, be there. less less affected by weather, but I'll be over that definitely. Yeah. That event's coming up, and 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 we've got you know a lot more beside. If you if you know if you want to know more about how you can help, or if you want to know more about how you can gain employment, um, you know, predominantly within the automotive industry, but it, you know any, any sort of advice and support, then um, you know then check out the um, check out the two websites. Drop us a line at the info address. And, um, and and the links are all on there. And, um, you know, we're happy to help. We're happy to support. Brilliant. Awesome. Brilliant. Thanks Cheers, for having Steve. me. Good here. work. No, thank you. That's it. Thank you for watching the H Hour podcast. If you're enjoying the podcast and you haven't already done so, please subscribe here around about there. I'm hoping it's around about there where the button's going to appear, if, not, if it's not already appeared. Uh, you can also, um, if you want to listen to the podcast, on your commute, for example, when you're driving, when it's not practical to watch the podcast, you can listen to it. It's on Spotify, it's on Apple Podcasts, it's on Google Podcasts, it's everywhere. It's on all of the uh, all of the common and not so common podcast apps. You can also, if you wish to do it, become a patron of Hey Hour. Becoming a patron of Hey Hour, you get access to all of the interviews before anyone else. So this interview with this guest was released days, if not weeks, before it was on release to the general public, and you also get access to. Uh, exclusive interviews which I do with each guest that last about five ten minutes that are based on questions that the patrons themselves of H Hour have chosen and each guest this one included gets asked those questions before the main podcast that's getting recorded it's like a pre-podcast interview lasts about 10 minutes and those interviews are really insightful really enjoyable nice and short and they only release the patrons they never get released to the public I don't know why I had a little stutter there um you also get access to 
a Discord community, exclusive Discord community only for patrons. You also get invited to a monthly Zoom call with myself and all the other patrons. And very often, most months, we have a previous podcast guest comes onto that Zoom call and has an exclusive Q&A with the patrons. In addition to this, there's monthly giveaways. We give away, give away gifts to my patron supporters. And it's all like, well, predominantly veteran-owned stuff. I'll go and buy veteran-owned apparel, veteran-owned product services, and I'll give them away to my patron supporters. And I'll also uh, do exclusive invites for events. So you'll get freebie tickets to events. To become a patron of Page Hour, go to patreon.com forward slash HK podcast. I'm spelling Patreon, P A T R E O N. Patreon.com forward slash HK podcasts. Hit become a patron. And uh, I'll see you on the next Zoom, Q- Zoom QA if you do. Oh, you also get your name in the credits. Thanks for watching. I will catch you next time.